Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. I want to talk about the power usage on our systems. And right now we're looking at our Platinum system. So this is a six-core system. This is the upgraded i7 version, so it's running at uh, 4.8 gigahertz. We've got a water cooler in it to keep it nice and cool. And we've got a, um, you know, the high-end graphics card. And, um, you know, this is just about as powerful a machine as we can build. Our total overkill is slightly more powerful, but this is pretty close to the most powerful. And what I want to talk about is um, power supplies and power draws. So lots of times people will call and say, well, you know, is 700 watts enough for the power supply? And, you know, I always say, well, yeah, it's plenty for the power supply, but um, I wanted to put something together to show you why I say that. Um, so let's look at some different power draws. First of all, you have something called vampire draw. Anytime you leave something plugged into a power outlet, even if it's turned off, it typically uses a little bit of electricity. And some uh, devices can be very bad about this. Now, um, this system has a very efficient power supply, and you can see we're running 0.8 watts. So 0.8 watts is really, really good for uh, a vampire draw. In other words, the draw when the computer is turned off. Hopefully you can see that and it's not glaring too badly. But I will I will tell you what the numbers are. So I'll power on the machine now. Another common misconception is that um, the computer runs, you know, this is a 4.8 gigahertz system, that it runs at 4.8 gigahertz all the time, and that's actually not true. Um, the computer will vary its clock speed depending on the amount of load you have on it. So if we open up the task manager, we'll see here that we have an i7-8700K, which normally runs at 3.7 gigahertz, but we have it overclocked, as I said, to 4.8, and we're getting 4.8 at the moment. But we, what we should see is after a while um, that clock speed drops because there's not a load on the processor. Now currently at uh, idle we're drawing about 44 watts. So I'm going to move that around a little bit so you can see it. Drawing 44 watts so that's actually uh, pretty good. We have an, uh, a power supply in here that's an 80 percent efficient power supply or in other words it wastes 20 percent of the electricity that's put into it. And you know that's actually might sound terrible, but that's actually pretty good. And this wasted electricity, where that goes is to heat. So whenever you have a device that is using um, electricity, you know, typically it's putting out some amount of heat. And that heat is that lost power that's lost to, efi to efficiency. So as you can see, we're idling at about 44 watts. And so let's start up X-Plane. Most games, I hate to call X-Plane a game, they typically only load one core up very heavily. You know, we have a six core system here with hyper-threading, so you see 12 total threads here. Each of these boxes represents a thread. But during the load process, X-Plane is actually able to use all of those cores during some part of the loading process, which makes the loading process go a little quicker. So I'm gonna, I've got X-Plane in a window so we can still see the task manager over here. And so I'm launching X-Plane. We've gone up to 120 or so watts. You know, it's varying obviously depending on load. Um, so let's see what happens here. We're at about a, around 100 watts or so, something like that. And you can see that several of the cores are now being loaded up with work to do. Again, we're varying between 120 to 140 or so watts. 150 is the highest number I've seen so far. And I'm just kind of moving this so you can see it uh, if it's in the glare. Now here we hit a bigger load. We're at 240. So we probably got a little graphics card involved there. All right, so now we're in the cockpit of X-Plane. And you can actually see here that the computer has so many cores um, that it actually doesn't even think it needs to even run the, the processor at the full 4.8 gigahertz. We see here we're actually only running at 3.8 because there's such a low load on the processor right now. 
Now, um, if I change this to full screen, that'll increase the load a bit, and you might see it run at the 4.8. It's up in the 4.2 to 4.3 range now. So again, you know, we're maxing out our frames per second at 60 because we have a 60 hertz display here. So X-Plane really, do, I mean, the processor really doesn't need to do any more work than it's already doing. You can also see one core now is pretty heavily loaded where the other cores with just a slight load on them. And notice here we're running about 155, 160 watts. This is a 1920 by 1080 display or 1080p. Now if we put a 4K display on here, that would introduce a bigger load on the processor and the video card and we would see this number go up. But we're going to actually take this thing to the max. But just know that when you're running X-Plane, your system's probably drawing anywhere from 150 to 300 watts at the 300 at the very top. Um, so with the 700 watt power supply, we have plenty of power available. So let's quit this, and I downloaded a little program called IDA64, I think that's how you say it. And what this will do is unlike X-Plane, and unlike just about every other program, it will put a 100% load on everything in the system. So I'm going to tell it to stress everything. So it's going to put 100% load on the processor, 100% load on the cache, 100% um, load on the math coprocessor, the processor they call the FPU, and 100% load on the GPU. And so maxing everything out, and I always tell people that you know if you manage to somehow max the whole computer out, the most you're going to see is 400 watts. And so right here we're seeing, and I'm moving it around a bit in case it's got glare on it, about 370 watts. So this is the fastest processor, the, and it's got a, the second fastest possible graphics card you can have, and we're at about 370 watts. Um, if you put the fastest graphics card, which is only one notch higher, maybe you see this go to about 425. So we're basically loading up the 700 watt power supply at about 50%. Now that's a good thing though, because power supplies get less efficient as they get closer to their maximum load. Also, it can decrease the lifetime or the, the life of the power supply if you're running it maxed out all the time. So if I had put, let's say, a 500 watt power supply in here, yes, it could technically do it, but it may not be the best decision because we run in that at a 500 watt power supply at 80 percent load and as we know as I mentioned earlier these power supplies are 80 percent efficient so that's essentially running it at full load so hopefully that helps you understand a little bit more about power draw you can see here that on our platinum system the maximum power draw that you're going to see is going to be 400 watts and again we're hovering around 370 right now and so a 700 watt is more than sufficient for our platinum system.